What's up guys, Noah here with Custom RC Mods. Today I'm coming at you with another custom quad build. This one here is for my Gep RC Singit 3 inch Ultimate Freestyle build. I'm super excited for this one. It was made to replace my Vortex 150, which was getting a little bit old in the tooth. And of course it was a little bit underpowered for modern freestyle. And specifically I made this so I could go ahead and fly FPV freestyle a little bit more, um, you know, stealthily, I guess around my college campus where a five inch quad is just a little bit too loud and a little bit too dangerous in most respects. So this thing is awesome. And of course I had to go ahead and incorporate the DJI digital FPV. PV system here uh, with the Cadex Vista. You guys know I'm a huge proponent of that transmission system and this was just the next quad to go ahead and upgrade. So let's go ahead and talk about the components of this build. I have already flown it. I'll show you that flight footage after we get done with this. So I'll be able to go ahead and speak to the quality of the components and whether they all kind of worked out for the result I was looking for with this quad. Um, so I'm really excited to do that with you. Let's go ahead and jump into that and then we'll jump into the flight footage. So first things first, like I said, this is the GEPRC Singit 3 inch CX3 frame. And they make two versions of this frame. Originally, I was gonna run 1507 3600 KV Sinwhip motors. I got those, I mounted it on here and they were just so power hungry, it was insane. I only got like a minute of flight time on a 4S 650 milliamp hour battery. And yeah, it was just not the result I was looking for. So I went ahead, got rid of those and got these brand new Zing 2 uh, 1404 3800 KV motors. Now, the main difference with these motors from the 1507 is that they are nine millimeter mounting rather than 12 millimeter mounting in the X um, bolt configuration there. So I had to go ahead and get a different bottom plate on there, the one that supports the smaller motors. But overall, I think it was much better because now I'm getting more in the four to five minute of flight time range when just cruising around. And of course, a little bit less than that for hardcore freestyle. So if you guys are looking to do something a little bit small on the motors, make sure to go ahead and get that different bottom plate. But the rest of the frame is the same. The nice thing about this one is that it has a really long and wide uh, kind of center chassis area. So you can have two 20 by 20 stacks, of course, one being the Cadex Vista and then one being my flight controller and ESC. So then of course we have the nano or the micro camera mounting here with the DJI camera. I went ahead and chose that one over the Nebula series, obviously just because the image quality is much better. So that's something that was really important to me when I'm not gonna be carrying any sort of GoPro or anything like that. So yeah, let's go ahead and talk about these motors. These are the Zing 2, a brand new line from iFlight. Uh, they're Unibel 1404 3800 KV motors, again, with the smaller mounting. Uh, I haven't had any issues with them so far. Again, only one flight. They seem to be very, very smooth, per usual from iFlight. And I'm really, really happy with these overall. I like how they look. You probably can't see them uh, that well just because you have a prop on there. Um, but they have this teal on the inside and then a navy on the outside. Again, Unibel, so that looks very, very sleek and modern all around. I'm a very big fan of that. Now, these props right here are the HQ 3 by 2.5 by 3 props. Um, so they're a little bit lesser pitch than I'm used to running on my 3-inch quads. However, that's mainly just for the flight time. Um, the throttle is pretty linear still. It definitely wouldn't have the top end of a 3 by 4 or a 3 by 3 inch pitch prop. Uh, but again, I'm going for flight time and going for that longer, um, more relaxed flying experience all around. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of take that little downgrade in power for more flight time. Now, moving on to my central components, uh, we've got the FC, which is the Diatone Mamba F722. Um, and I like their electronics all around. All the quads pretty much that you see back there are running Diatone equipment. And this one, again, is no different. I like that this one has a lot of UARTs. And of course, we're not using that much processing power considering this is an F7 processor on this board. Now, for my ESC, I'm running a 30 amp 20 by 20 uh, BL Heli S ESC, also from Diatone. On a lot of my ultimate builds, I like to go ahead and get the 32-bit ESCs. However, this is a micro, it doesn't really matter as much. And I don't do a lot of tweaking of the BL Heli settings, especially for micros anyway. So again, 30 amps is plenty for 4S use um, around here. But if I was going 6S, which would not really be that practical for this situation, I definitely wanna go up to like 40 amps or something like that, just to be safe. 
Finally, of course, I am running the Caddx Vista. Like I said, we've got the Vista right here in the back and then the DJI camera up front with a little TPU hood on it just to protect it. That's the one thing that's kind of annoying about this frame. You might be able to see it, but there's two mounting holes uh, for the DJI camera. So there's not one that's right on center. I guess this frame wasn't immediately designed to be compatible with the DJI camera. So mounting it on the bottom hole right there pushes the camera upwards and of course um, out of the protection of this metal cage. So it's not the best, um, but again, that TPU hood is gonna be protecting my lens um, and their lenses are pretty cheap all around. So if I happen to break one in a crash, I'm not too concerned. So that's it for the DJI, DJI system on there. And then of course I am running the Crossfire Nano receiver. You can see I have these uh, antennas poking out the top. I originally had antenna tubes on there. However, unfortunately I crashed it once or twice on my first flying session here. Uh, so that it broke off very easily. I'm probably gonna go ahead and get an Immortal T on here. Uh, that should be relatively easy to do uh, with this frame. I'm probably gonna mount it like right up front here, something like that. That'll just be a little bit more durable. I don't think the range will be that much big of a difference um, or anything like that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for all the specs on here. Again, I'm running this with a 4S 650 milliamp hour tattoo battery. I've got like four of these. They're relatively inexpensive, like $11 a piece, I think, uh, which is very, very good. So overall, yeah, I mean, so far, especially after flying it, I think that the uh, electronics all work really well together. A nice, efficient, yet poppy flying experience. And I'm really happy with how this build turned out. Now, speaking of this drone flying, let's go ahead, waste no time and get out and start looking at some of that flight footage. All right, so we're up in the air here with my brand new three inch ultimate build. This is the maiden flight. And for obvious reasons, I'm not gonna be taking too many risks in today's flight. I'm just not comfortable with the quad, as well as look at all this scraggle that these trees present. Um, that's one of the major downsides of flying around in the winter here. You don't really know where those branches are, where the tree starts and stops per se. Uh, so it's really hard to take a lot of risks and do proximity moves over the trees and around them. Things like that. I'm going to do some cruising uh, freestyle and try to play it safe, try to bring the quad back in one piece, and also to get a good idea of the flight time. Now this tune is stock Betaflight 4.2.8, uh, which is actually pretty good. I mean, they've made slight adjustments. I'm really excited to see what they do with Betaflight 4.3, um, but for now, I mean, this is totally flyable. This is a stark contrast to what it was like back uh, when you flew like 3.5 or 3.2 or any of those really old uh, Betaflight firmwares where there was just so much prop wash and uh, all the PIDs were just not properly tuned at all. Um, you kind of had to do some work on the front end anticipating how you thought the drone would fall short in the flight characteristics. Um, and then, of course, you'd be able to actually fly it enjoyably on the maiden flight. But if not, you're pretty much screwed. So here we are. I think that pretty much everything, at least from the stick feel, um, feels good on the tune. Maybe just a little bit more degain. Uh, you can see that there is a lot of prop wash uh, when it comes downwards, like after a split S. Or uh, when you give it a punch of throttle, there's definitely just a little bit of instability uh, that I'm not a fan of on this build. So I need to go ahead and tune that out. Maybe just bump up the filters a little bit but in terms of the p gain and the i gain i think those are pretty solid as they are now a few other things i do want to address um first off we have not had a day this warm and this sunny in a good while so i'm really excited for the 2021 flying season uh, to begin and hopefully we don't have too much more snow coming because then i won't be able to get out and go flying and the ground's just gonna be all muddy and an absolute mess and that's really no fun uh, i can fly of course in the air but as soon as you hit the ground that is like a 30 minute to an hour um, cleanup job on the quad. And of course the electronics just don't like that. But I'm re having a really, really good time flying this thing. This is pretty much the exact application that I built this quad for, all things considered. You know, I was really struggling to feel safe flying my five inch quad out here. So now I've got a three inch quad that's really, really quiet. It still has a lot of the same power, um, pretty darn good flight characteristics. Here's something you can't do with a five inch squad and yeah go through a really really tight gap like that um, that's definitely going to be something that adds a little bit more value um, to
your spots like this they'll have those gaps up within the trees um, so I'm really excited for that there as well but this is very very stealthy like I said uh, there is not a lot of sound created by this quad so that's good overall but you can kind of see what I was saying there by the scraggle you know even going through there with this digital FPV feed um, I still wasn't totally confident uh, flying through that really large gap in those two trees there so um, I had to go ahead and approach it with caution now, let's go ahead and talk about how this drone's flying and how the components are working um, just from a power setup standpoint. And I honestly really like it. I think this is quite unique because it's actually really efficient just to cruise around. Um, this flight, I believe, I got like 4 minutes and 30 seconds of total flight time, even doing some poppy freestyle here and there. Um, but just cruising around like this, there's barely any sag at all. And even all the way down to like 13.5 volts, which is why I discharged the pack to, um, is a smaller battery. So I don't really care too much about it. I just wanted to get the maximum flight time I could. Um, so I want it down a little bit lower than the safer amount, but I didn't really feel any sag. Um, it's somewhat similar to flying uh, 6S on 5 inch rather than 4S. This is almost like flying uh, 4S on 3 inch rather than 3S in a sense, if that makes sense. But yeah, that's 4 minutes and 30 seconds of flight time. Overall flying really good. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for the video, and I'm really happy with how this project turned out overall. I think it achieved a lot of my main goals for the build with flying colors, considering that this thing got almost five minutes of flight time. Normally, I struggle to get like three minutes on a micro, uh, so that is really, really good, not to mention that it's stealthy and it's safe. And honestly, this is gonna be a really, really approachable platform uh, for beginners looking to get into FPV after they've put in time and lift off or another simulator. Instead of recommending that they go up to a five inch, they could go to something like this, which again would be a little bit less intimidating, uh, but it'll still have a lot of the same good characteristics of a five inch quad. If you're interested in building a drone just like this, or you know, with a little few deviances or whatever you wanna do, I'll have this entire parts list down in the video description. You can check it out there. I'll also have options if you fly like 2.4 gigahertz systems or you fly analog video. I'll have those options down in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you aren't already a subscriber, it'd really mean a lot to me if you could go ahead and click that free subscribe button, comment down below, like the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.